Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. It's a wee bit spicier than the past two that I've recorded, but still should be manageable for most of you. So we have indefinite integral of the square root of x times sine inverse of the square root of x dx. If you want a little hint, you need to use integration by parts. And then one other little thing. So a good clue that it's time to use integration by parts is when your integrand has an inverse trig function in it because we don't know offhand the antiderivatives for inverse trig functions but we sure do know their derivatives so i'm gonna let u be sine inverse of rad x and then dv is rad x dx which i'm already gonna rewrite as x to the one half dx thinking ahead i just want to make life easy when i go find v now let me just remind you what the derivative of sine inverse is, and I'll use theta so there's no confusion. So the derivative of sine inverse of theta is 1 over the square root of 1 minus theta squared. So in this case, theta, or the argument for sine inverse, is rad x. So that whole quantity is going to get squared in the denominator. Now when I find du, I also have to use the chain rule, so let's be careful here. So derivative of sine inverse of the square root of x would be 1 over square root 1 minus square root of x squared times, by the chain rule, the derivative of the square root of x. It's 1 half x to the negative 1 half. I'm just going to rewrite it already as 1 over 2 rad x dx. How are we doing? Good? Okay, so this is 1 over, now this will simplify, 1 minus x is underneath the radical, and then times 1 over 2 rad x dx. Beautiful. Now we need to find v. So take the antiderivative, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Now we have 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. Boom. So time to apply our biparts formula. We have u times v. So that's going to be, put that 2 thirds x to the 3 halves <clears throat> put that two-thirds x to the three halves right out front so it's nice and clear and there's no ambiguity as to what's the argument on sine inverse and then times you know sine inverse of rad x minus integral we have v times du so here's du and i need to multiply it by v now something i like to do is take those constants and just put them outside my integral It'll just make things a lot easier when we're cleaning up. So, on that note, I'm going to put a one-half, a two-thirds integral. I have x to the three-halves up top, and then I have square root one minus x, another square root of x, dx. How are we doing? Everyone's under control? Up to speed? Fabulous. Well, I can see clearly these little twos are going to cancel. And then let's start simplifying the integrand, but I'm just going to keep rewriting this little term out here every step of the way so we don't lose track of them. So 2 thirds x to the 3 halves sine inverse of rad x minus 1 third integral. And then from here, notice this is x to the 1 half. And then I have x to the 3 halves in the numerator. Those I can simplify. And I'm just left with now x to the first in the numerator over 1 minus x in the denominator. And then hopefully you've encountered an integral that looks like this before. Basically what I want is just to switch positions for where the 1 minus x is. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a u sub. But we've already used up u for by parts, so let's pick t instead. So let's let t equal 1 minus x. Then dt is just negative 1 dx, right? So you're looking and you're probably thinking, Professor V, what is this going to do? Well, now in the denominator, I have, let's straighten that up, let's straighten up on this lovely day. There we go. I have square root of t. This dx is just negative dt. That's fine. But what am I going to do about this x in the numerator? Well, you're going to solve for x right here where we chose our substitution. If I move x over, it's equal to 1 minus t. So here's 1 minus t. dx is negative dt, so now I'm going to make this positive. Good? Well, what was the point of doing that? Notice how 
they kind of swapped places. This is what I want you to observe. We had two terms underneath the radical, one in the numerator. Now it's the other way around. One term in the radical, two terms in the numerator. And they were the same degree. This works when everything's just linear like this. Why am I excited? Because I can rewrite the denominator now as t to the 1 half and write it separately under each of the terms in the numerator. Behold. So 2 thirds x to the 3 halves sine inverse rad x. It's just hanging tight out there. Beautiful. Integral. 1 over square root of t. So that's 1 over t to the 1 half minus t over square root of t, t over t to the 1 half dt. You couldn't have done that earlier because we had this radical with two terms. That's all trapped together, but see how nice and fancy free this is with one little term? Okay, carrying on. 2 thirds x to the 3 halves sine inverse of rad x. And then let's think to ourselves, we can probably do some of this in our head. This is t to the negative 1 half power, and then this is t to the positive 1 half power. So plus 1 third integral t to the negative 1 half minus t to the 1 half dt. And then at long last, let's go ahead and take that antiderivative. So here we've got 2 thirds x to the 3 halves sine inverse of, that's rad x. Why did it become a 3? I think I was excited. Okay, then plus 1 third antiderivative of t to the 1 half, add 1 to the exponent divide by the new exponent, and then minus, I'm going to distribute that one third. Again, add one to the exponent, it's going to be three halves, divide by the new exponent, two thirds plus c. Fabulous. And then let's just go back. Remember, t was equal to one minus x. So let's go back to the original variable, two thirds x to the three halves, sine inverse of rad x, plus 2 thirds, t was, very good, 1 minus x to the 1 half, minus 2 ninths, 1 minus x to the 3 halves, plus c. Et voila. That concludes your integral of the day. Did you get it right? I hope so. Comment down below if you did it differently. Although I don't think there's too many variations, but I'm, I'm always curious to hear what you guys are working on over there. Also, if you need to review any of the integration techniques that I worked through quickly today, then just look at the description. I have all of my video lectures linked on integration by parts, U sub, trig sub, partial fractions, you name it. So you can use my channel as a resource, as a guide to help you while you're in your calculus classes, or even if you need to review pre-calc, trig, or brush up, maybe some buried calculus skills if you're going to jump back in and it's been a while. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. Thank you guys so much for your support, and I'll be back sooner than later. Bye!